if you are for me. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see. this morning. church community and you give financially and of your time to make Sunday mornings happen. It's just incredible to see what God does when we're pulling together, sharing in this beautiful space, getting to celebrate with one another. So anytime you want to give, you can do so online at any time, mablecitychapel.org slash give. And today what I have to share with you is all about groups, groups, groups. So if you're here in person, hopefully you got one of these beautiful little handouts that has a list of a bunch of different groups. And no matter where you're at, whatever you're going through, we have a wide variety of groups. We wanna meet you where you're at and help you find the people who are gonna challenge you, who are gonna connect with you, who are gonna encourage you because truly God made us to learn and grow in community. We don't do it in isolation. We do it in families, we do it with friends. And so we wanna help you find the people who are gonna draw you closer to God so you can do it together. So that's why we have all these groups. And if you're here in person, again, there's a table right outside. We're doing little giveaways for people who sign up. So make sure you check that out. But 
a bunch of different categories of groups. There are legacy groups, which are all about building a lasting legacy for the next generation, financial peace, blended families class, every opportunity you can think of, and care groups. So if you're walking through something like divorce, you're walking through grief, we want you to do that in community. There are people who have gone through it, who are going through it, who want to share in that journey with you and come up alongside of you. And there's life groups. And if you're not familiar with life groups, they're just super simple. We just do life together. We get together to do a little study, hang out, eat food together. And um, we have about four-ish months on our schedule till we start summer groups, which are fun, social, just have a good time. But that's typically when our life groups take a break. So if you're someone who has thought about joining a life group before, but have said, I don't know if I'm ready to make that long of a commitment, I challenge you just think of it as the next four months or just dive in and see, hey, is this maybe a fit for me? A lot of them meet every other week, so that's only like two a month. So we wanna make it nice and easy for you to start to make connections, start to make friends. And if you're brand new to church, you're brand new to faith, and you're like, I don't even know if I'm there yet. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to figure out what's happening in this space. We want to encourage you to check out the Starting Point class, and that's going to start February 5th. Starting Point is simply that. It's a starting point for your faith. It's a starting point to ask challenging questions, figure out what Jesus is about, figure out what church is about. Totally casual, and we want you to feel comfortable in that space. So you can check all of those groups out online at maplechapel.org or on your church center app, go under groups, and you can find the starting point class under events. We want to help you plug in wherever we can. So check those out. But maybe you are already in one of those groups or classes. I'm going to challenge you today. Think about somebody in your life who comes to mind, who you think, wow, that person would really benefit from having people around them in that space and loving on them in that way. And then go and find that person and give them a personal invitation. Tell them in person or text them and say, hey, I just wanna let you know our church is doing this group. I think it'd be a great fit for you. And then help them sign up. I mean, sometimes the hardest thing is just getting there. It's like working out, right? Sometimes the hardest thing is getting to the gym and we just need somebody to kind of hold our hand and make it easy for us. So if somebody comes to mind when you're thinking of these groups, grab them, say, hey, thought of you, Would, can I help you figure that out? Is that something you'd be interested in? And guide them along the way. We wanna be there for each other in that way, pushing and encouraging one another to grow in our faith. But today we are continuing our soundtrack series, week two, woo, woo. and so we are excited to dive into that. I wanna pray for us, so if you would stand, please. I would love to pray over us as we get started together. Jesus, thanks so much for the opportunity to get to be challenged in this community, God. Thanks that you didn't make us to live alone. I know there's a lot of temptation to isolate ourselves and things get hard and people have opinions. We just wanna close off and hide, Lord, but you created us to grow and thrive in community. And would we be examples of what that's supposed to look like? Would we be light and your love to the people around us that we would be showing who you are and your goodness and glory in groups, that we would have hearts that are humble and teachable and that we would be challenged by one another in way that, ways that make us grow and that we would also be encouraged in our identity in you, God. We need that language. We need to hear it from other people to remind us of who we are and who you say that we are, God. And we need to hear your word out loud telling us that over and over again. So Lord, for the people in this room who are just feeling that nudge of like, man, I really wanna get connected, but I don't know, I'm kinda scared, I'm kinda nervous that soundtrack is playing in their mind. Lord, would you give them the boldness to, to step out in faith and also give that friend who is thinking about them the boldness to step out in faith and invite them and help them along, Jesus. Thanks for the work that you're already doing in this soundtrack series of breaking strongholds in our hearts and minds. Lord, we want our minds to be transformed so we can see the world the way that you see it. So we can approach life without fear, without shame, without condemnation, but instead approach it with hope and joy and, and thoughts that are life-giving so that we can experience the abundant life that you want to give us, Jesus. And that's what this series is all about. And so we lay our attitudes at your feet. We lay everything we carried into this room at your feet, the events of the weekend, Lord, it's yours. This is our space and our time to hear from you. And Lord, I pray that you would speak boldly and you would speak into our hearts in new and fresh ways that we would say, wow, God, I, I just had no idea. And thank you so much for loving me enough to give me this freedom. God, we love you. Thank you for your love for us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being here, guys. Find somebody around you and say, hello, good morning. Good to see you.
eyes. The odds are stacked against me. Surrounded on all sides. But I've heard you can part the water. So in your name, come and turn the tide. I'm staring at this mountain There's no chance I'm getting through But I've heard they can melt before you So in your name I'm asking you to move Let that break you And let that break
gonna rain down And that cross stands before me It is finished, it is done Yeah, I heard you tell death it was over So in your name, I'll claim this fight, it's one. Amen.
There's no power. There's no power. And how I live for the moments, and where I'm still in your presence, where all noise dies down. Lord, speak to me now, 'cause you have all my attention, and I will linger and listen. I can't miss a thing, 'cause Lord, I know my heart wants more. My heart wants something new, so I surrender all. All I want and all I want is to live within Your love and be undone by who You are. And my desire is to know You deeper. Throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. For just a touch of heaven. You're the fire in the morning. You're the cool in the evening, the breath in my soul, the life in my bones. There is no hesitation, and your love and affection is the sweetest of all. And Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants for something new. So I surrender all. Yeah, all I want is to live within Your love and be undone by who You are. My desire is to know You deeper, Lord. I'll open up again, and throw my fears into. Just a touch of heaven. For just a touch of heaven, just a glimpse of heaven. Make these words your prayer this morning. I open up my heart to you, and I open up. My heart to you now, and do what only you can. Yeah, just tell me, 'cause Jesus have Your way in me now. I open up my heart. Yeah, keep singing. I open up.
by who you are My desire is to know you deeper oh, I will open up again And throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for a touch of heaven oh, God, this morning, would we throw our fears into the wind? Would we throw our anxiety into the wind? It's that act of surrender. Um, Talked about this in the first service. And, uh, I just feel like it's applicable. When I was growing up, there was this, you know, Often at like youth camps or anything like that, we talked about how there was um, you know, this house, like imagine yourself as like a house. And we all have those closets, we all have those doors in our house. We have a drawer and you know, it's full of stuff. <laughs> we, don't, we don't like people seeing that drawer. But those are the spots that God is saying, hey, I want all of that. I want all of that. I want that brokenness, I want that messiness. It might just be one thing sitting in that drawer, that closet that you're like, I'm not ready for that. God wants all of that. So this morning, I know there's some of us in this room that are they're, they're saying, they're feeling that call of, hey, that surrender call of giving that last little bit. I've given 95%, my life's been great. Things are rolling well. But there's just that little uneasy twinge in me right now that's saying, oh man, not that drawer, Jesus, not that drawer. God, give us the, the strength, the, the confidence in you, that you are a trustworthy God, that you are a faithful God, that you are the healer, the way maker, the light. It's safe with you. My secrets, my, my hidden things there, they're safe with you. You want those. You want me to surrender them to you. So as we continue this morning, God, I pray just a, a blessing over this service for, for Jay as he shares in just a moment. God, I, I pray that, you know, something we sit with right now would be something that we just allow just to dissipate throughout the service, but just continue to build upon that. Just continue to, 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 to press in on us those things of surrender, those things of control in our own lives that you want. Protect us this morning. Allow us to celebrate you well, Jesus. Allow us to be challenged and equipped and encouraged this morning. We thank you. And in that powerful name of Jesus, we declare this morning, amen. 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 Hey, thank you so much. You can take a seat. I want to welcome you again if you're with us in person, if you're online this morning. My name's Calvin. I'm a creative arts pastor. And we're so glad that you found a home here this morning. Um, I want you to know you belong here. You're here for a reason. And uh, we're glad you're with us. So this morning, we're going to continue, as Annette talked about, in a series called Soundtracks. We're in week two. Uh, we, man, I'll tell you what. Last week was one of my favorite Sundays we've had in a long time. It was just a powerful Sunday, and we've heard stories, and it's just evident the life change and the things that are happening um, in our church. And that's not because of anything we do, but because of Jesus. And so this morning, I just say, Jesus, we're ready for you. We are excited for you to challenge us and teach us this morning. We thank you. And so an expectation, I want you guys just to look to the screens here. We've got a video setting up this series. Uh, it's called Soundtracks.
Love your energy. I don't know about you, but I could have gone on for about four more songs there. So Calvin, when's the next worship night? We're ready. We're ready. Like, that was powerful, you guys. Um, love hearing your voices singing. We are in this series, Soundtracks. And like Calvin said, it's been really fun, even the first week, to hear your stories about the different soundtracks that you've been identifying. Um, and, and man, this worship this morning just lines up with the, the, the point of this, one of the main points of this series, that this is spiritual warfare. Like, this is a battle. And so we're going to get into that again today. But um, we said this last week, but, but the Bible and modern psychology kind of line up in this one way, in this one important thought. And that simply is that what you think shapes who you are. What you think shapes everything about you. And I love what Pastor Craig Rochelle says here. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your emotions are always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your, your actions will move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Even your dreams will move. Your relationships, right? Your spiritual life, everything is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What you think today will, will determine who you become tomorrow. It's really that simple. John Acuff wrote a book called Soundtracks. That's where we're drawing a lot of the material from this series from. And he says, you know, your, your thoughts are like soundtracks that you listen to over and over and over again. You all have your, your favorite music. It'd be fun to look at your playlist and see what all you have on your, you know, your favorites. You listen to that, you know, day after day. And your thoughts are like soundtracks that you listen to even more than your favorite music. They're playing constantly on repeat in your mind. And those soundtracks are totally shaping you and your future and everything about your life, whether you realize it or not. Your thoughts are shaping you. And we go through life and we kind of collect soundtracks for different parts of our life. So you have a soundtrack. You know, you think about work on Monday morning and what's coming. You'll have a soundtrack that will start going off. Right? You have a soundtrack about your boss. You have a soundtrack about your coworker, your classmates. You have a soundtrack about retirement and what that's going to be like. You have soundtracks about all kinds of different parts of your life. You have soundtracks about the person you're married to. You know, I, I just felt convicted this week to really to pray over marriages this week. And I'm convinced there's some of you here who are, are in a, a struggling or a difficult marriage. And the difference between your, your marriage ending in divorce or experiencing healing and renewal depends on what soundtracks you listen to starting today going forward. Right? Starting right now, you have that choice, the power of your soundtrack. Some of your soundtracks, you know, they, they're about your spiritual life, about God, about prayer. Some of you have been hurt by church or by Christians in the past. You have a soundtrack. It's a big step for you just to be in this building this morning. We have lots and lots of soundtracks just about ourselves, our past, our future, our worth, our identity. We collect these soundtracks over time, and some of them are positive. Some of them are life-giving, but many of them are negative. One of the things that Johnny Cuff says in his books is that your brain can be a real jerk, and it's true. Like, there's something about when stress and and the hard times hit, we have this like automatic tendency to go negative in our soundtracks. That's kind of the pull. I've talked about it before, calling them ants, automatic negative thoughts, right? They're, they're automatic. You don't have to try to think of them. They just pop into your head. They're negative. They pull you in a negative direction. And they're like, you know, ants crawling all over your food at a picnic. It will really ruin your day. So in this series, we're calling them broken soundtracks. And it's thoughts and beliefs that are distorted, negative not life-giving, not from God, not taking you in the direction that God wants you to go. I mentioned last week a study that said the average person has about 500 intrusive, unwanted thoughts a day. Think about that. And they last an average 14 seconds, so two hours of your day is spent playing soundtracks that you really don't want to listen to. But they're there playing in your head. Or imagine for two hours you've got ants crawling over your brain. That's a beautiful image, isn't it? kind of ruining your brain, ruining your picnic, right? You have these automatic negative thoughts that are there. Well, we looked at some scripture last week from a guy named Paul. We want to look at these, these same scripture here again um, today. And Paul is someone, if you're not familiar with Paul, he, he really didn't like Christians a whole lot either. I mean, he was persecuting Christians. He had a lot of negative soundtracks about Christians. And then he had this radical encounter with Jesus, and it radically changed his soundtracks. And all of a sudden, he became uh, just consumed with telling people about Jesus, and he started churches, and then he would write letters to those churches to encourage them in their, in their faith journey. And one of those letter, letters, it's a second letter he wrote to the Christians in Corinth, 
Um, and he understood soundtracks. He writes a lot about Before there was modern psychology and even people understood the power of thinking, he writes a lot about it. And this is the, the scripture. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We said last week that part of Paul's message here is that we live in a world at war, and our mind is the battlefield. Your mind is a battlefield. Right? There's a real enemy, and, and he goes around looking for your vulnerabilities, and he's going to suggest some kind of a broken soundtrack, and you're going to listen to that, and, and the more you... You listen to it, the more you believe it. And the more you believe it, the stronger its grip on you. Right? We don't use that word stronghold a lot. You don't walk around to your friends usually and say, hey, tell me about your strongholds this week. You know, what's going on there? Um, but it's a really important pr principle for us to understand. I think it's interesting that, that the Bible describes God also as a stronghold, a fortress. Right? Our thoughts have consequences. They take us, you have the thought that, that God loves you and he cares about you, and that will take you to one kind of fortress or stronghold. You'll be, you'll be surrounded by God's peace and his presence and his love. And then you have one that says, God doesn't care about me at all. Right? That's a different kind of stronghold, but our thoughts have consequences. And the more we believe in the stronger the grip it has on us. And the truth is, we all have broken soundtracks, and, and those broken soundtracks create strongholds in our life. Last week very much felt like a Sunday that involved spiritual warfare. I mean, it, we had a couple of staff who, who had dreams the night before that just were like these battle kinds of dreams. And that said something in our huddle about, man, it feels like there's just some warfare going on this morning. And um, we have some other things that happened that morning that I can't, I can't share because of confidentiality. But it just felt like one of those mornings. It was just battle after battle after battle. Um, and, and it's easy to maybe look at a sermon series like this and think, well, this is kind of a nice you know, sermon series about the power of positive thinking, but it's really not. I mean, this is as much about spiritual warfare as anything I know about. If there really is an enemy and your mind is the battlefield, I guarantee you he is going to show up there and he's going to wage war. The question is, are you going to pick up your weapons and are you going to fight back? That's really the question. So that's the challenge. That's the challenge for us this morning is, what does it look like? We've been provided these weapons. Let's pick them up and let's go into battle. Let's learn to wage war on the enemy. We talked about four steps involved in this battle. Recognize, remove, replace, and repeat. We want to recognize the broken soundtracks that play in our head. If you're paying attention, you see that I changed number two. It was refute. But the more I thought about it, it's like that's part of it. You know, but, but really the word that, that that's taken from is demolish. And that you refute, you argue, but man, we want to crush that thing is what we want to do. We want to remove it. So we're changing it to remove. Um, I probably messed up all of our graphics and everything that had been out there since last week, but that's okay. Recognize, remove. We want to replace the negative soundtracks with new, positive, healthy, life-giving soundtracks. And that's where we're going next week. And then number four is we want to repeat those until they become just as automatic as the broken ones were. That's the path. So today, we're going to continue to look a bit at these first two, recognize and, and remove. And, and those are right there in, in this scripture. If we go back to the scripture... Um, in first, second Corinthians, um, it, it has the steps right there. First step, number one, take captive, right? You got to take, you got to take your thoughts captive. You got to pay attention to the, the thoughts going through your head and say, do they line up with what Jesus would think? And I've been encouraging you start a thought journal. I really hope you do that. Um, eventually we're going to have like side A and side B to our thought journal, kind of the, the broken ones, but then the ones that we replace. But for now, just start paying attention and writing down, make notes in your phone. What are those broken soundtracks? that are going through your head. And then once we identify something as a, a broken soundtrack, something that doesn't line up with God's truth, we want to remove it, right? That's when the real war starts, right? That's when we go into battle. And we need to, we need to say no, you know? Um, we refuse to continue thinking in this way. I love the word here in the Greek, the, that, that word demolish. I mean, it is, it's a forceful word, like to pull down, to throw down, to smash, to crush, Right? It's, it's about waging war. It's about going to battle, to demolish those soundtracks that we've captured that we see are not taking us in a life-giving direction. Um, I, we're going to spend some time talking today because it's, it's really harder than you think to recognize those broken soundtracks. I mean, it'd be great if we could just all do that. But there's a number of factors that, that actually just makes that 
that challenging. And you, you, can't, you can't demolish it till you capture it, right? We have to be able to identify it. I want you guys to become like broken soundtrack ninjas, like experts at identifying these broken soundtracks and just demolishing them. Um, and, and that's for your benefit, but so you can help the people around you too who, who wrestle with this kind of thing. Um, I remember being a teenager in the 80s, and uh, there was a movement to kind of destroy all your secular, back then, cassette tapes. Anyone know what a cassette tape is? Some of you, uh, a CD. Because of this fear of what was called backward masking. You guys remember that? Like there were secret messages that were hidden, you know, especially rock music. And, and if you played those backwards, you'd hear these kind of satanic messages, and that might affect your mind. Um, and so... Like, I don't know. I always thought it's interesting to be so concerned about what maybe would affect you backwards when the lyrics going forward were probably bad enough to be concerned about, right? <laughs> so I don't know how effective that, all that back, but that's how your thoughts work right now. Like, you have a lot of thoughts you don't know you're thinking. They're playing in the background, kind of below the surface, and you're not aware of them. So that's the first step is that we have to just become more of our thinking because it's hard to take capture if you're not even aware of it. And then once you become aware of your thoughts... Um, it's hard to identify them as broken. First of all, they just seem normal, right? They're just Jay's thought. Like, they're just normal kind of, this is the way I think, and they don't, they, don't, they don't seem off. And if you believe a lie, does it seem like a lie to you? Like, if you believe something is true, it, se- I mean, it, it seems true. And so a lot of things we believe to be true aren't really true. One of the biggest mistakes we can make is just to assume that what we believe Everything we believe is true. Everything we think is true. It isn't. And so it's hard to identify sometimes those things that are broken um, because of, of our minds are sometimes really jerks. And, and Satan is like an angel disguised in light, right? That's what we said last week. So I want to give you this morning just some ways of becoming broken soundtrack ninjas. I want to give you some tools to be able to identify. First, tools to uncover things that may be hidden, things, soundtracks that may be broken, and maybe hidden. And the first one of those is things that you repeatedly say out loud when you're stressed out or upset. Or you get stressed out, and you get upset, you have these really loud thoughts, and you know those loud thoughts sometimes leak out of your mouth, right? And we have these things that we repeat and we say when we're in these stressful situations I am so stupid, I'm a mess, life is so unfair, I can't handle this stress. So I just want to challenge you to go by this week. Think about the things that come out of your mouth when you're particularly stressed out or upset. What are those things you say again and again? Ask the people around you. They probably could help you identify some of those things. And then when you you identify, when you capture them, it's time to go to war. It's time to tear them down, right? It's time to battle against those broken soundtracks. Second one is emotional reactivity. When you find yourself kind of reacting strongly to something someone said or did to you. And if you think about this, a lot of our broken soundtracks are connected to, to fears or wounds, especially wounds. If I had a, a wound on my arm under my shirt here, and you came up after the service and just gently touched it, I would really react strongly to that pain. And you'd be like, geez, you know, I just barely touched, right? And that's how it is emotionally sometimes. Somebody kind of touches something that is sensitive. There's, there's a wound that's there. Sometimes we don't even recognize it's a wound. I remember when Beth and I were first married, um, I would react incredibly defensively when she was upset about something. Um, and I, I recognized I had this, this broken soundtrack playing in my head. It was, if you mess up, you aren't good enough. Right? You're a disappointment, Jay. You're a failure as a father. You're a failure as a husband. This is the message that I heard playing on repeat in my head. And, and I would get really defensive. And Beth would be like, why are you reacting so strongly? And I'm like, because you're telling me I'm a failure. She said, I'm just telling you, I wish you would have taken the trash out like you said you were going to. I'm not saying you're a failure. You know, it was, I was seeing her as the problem. Like what she was saying was the problem, not recognizing that that was hitting a wound. And it was, it was the soundtrack that I was saying when she was, when she was upset about something that was really a problem. So this jumps into to next week, but I had to really work on coming up with a new soundtrack. Right? You can mess up and still be a good person, Jay. Right? You, can, you can make a mistake. And still be a good person, a good father, a good husband, a good leader. It's possible. So paying attention, when you, when you feel this reactivity, go away somewhere. Find a quiet space and invite the Holy Spirit just to help you, to help you identify, is there a wound there? You know, part of going to battle is picking up weapons and fighting. And part of battle is, is going and getting 
some of your wounds healed so you can be more effective in fighting. And so sometimes we do, that's what we want to be here for you as a church. We want to be a place where you, your wounds can be healed, where you can, where you can leave stronger and, and, and ready for battle. So pay attention to that this week. By the way, I'm going to give you several different lists today. Those are all on our website. You can go there under sermon notes and you have them. So feel free to write them down here. Feel free to take pictures of the screen. Um, but you can also go to our sermon notes and you can find all of them there. The next one is self-doubt and insecurity. If you feel that, you know, that feeling of self-doubt or insecurity start to rise in you, guaranteed there's a broken soundtrack underneath it somewhere, right? So again, take time. A lot of these come from our childhood. I, I often say that our, our childhood, we're, we're like wet cement. The, the things that are said or done leave these impressions and then it dries and we just carry that with us often into adulthood. I remember counseling with a guy who was as buff as anyone I've ever worked with, um, but as a middle school kid, he was made fun of constantly, chubby and, and made fun of. And here he is now, a grown man, looking the way he does, but, but guess what he felt like on the inside? He was still that middle school kid. He carried those same insecurities around with him as an adult. And that's what we often do. We, we have these broken soundtracks that attach. It's like wet cement makes an impression. And it's much harder, some of you work with cement, it's much harder to reshape cement once it's dried. But it's possible. So when you feel that, again, pay attention. This is an opportunity to discover what are those broken soundtracks that are connected to my, my insecurities and my self-doubts. Last one I want to mention. Um, again, these are things that help us uncover hidden soundtracks. So it's avoidance behavior. If you find yourself um, just avoiding something or someone, especially with a little anxiety, it's, it's usually connected to some kind of a broken soundtrack. Um, you, you decide, hey, I should probably sign up for life groups, but you... Uh, you don't follow through. I mean, there's this something that just holds you back. Or, or maybe you have an idea you want to share in class or at a meeting and uh, you, you hold back. You don't do it. You know what, what people might think. Or, um, you know, you have these, these you, you, you worry about um, what people will think about you in those kind of ways. And so you hold back. You just find yourself avoiding. Maybe you sense God saying, hey, you should go pray for this person. Ah, and you just don't. It's that whenever you find yourself avoiding in that way, it's a great time um, to, to just... Again, ask the Holy Spirit, what is under the surface there? What's the soundtrack that's broken? By the way, one of the best tools when you feel that kind of avoidance feeling is to do whatever it is that you want to not do. <laughs> Make sense? Greatest way to overcome that kind of fear or anxiety is just do it, right? Push yourself. Push yourself to, to follow through and do it. Take a friend with you if you have to, but, but take that extra step in doing it. So again, when you find yourself this week, any of these things, pay attention and, and just pause and invite the Holy Spirit to help reveal what's hidden behind that stuff. What is it that he wants to reveal about broken soundtracks? There are some soundtracks that both scripture and psychology will tell you are, they're, they're clearly broken. You can't think this way without knowing 100% for certain these are just broken. These are not taking you anywhere that you want to go. And so I want to I wanna list a couple of those for you. First one is what we call what if thinking. What if thinking. And these are soundtracks about just all the different possible negative outcomes that could happen in your future. Again, your brain can be a real jerk sometimes, right? So when you face an uncertain future, it tends to want to just populate your brain with, with the worst possible outcomes. And how are you going to feel if you spend time just rehearsing all the possible things that could go wrong in your life, right? It's going to lead you toward, actually, it's one of the main types of thinking that leads to anxiety. If you're an anxious person, if you struggle with anxiety, um, this, this is one thing to really look for. I mean, what if I fail this test? What if the economy doesn't recover? What if the test results are not good? What if I can't afford to go to the college I want to go to? What if retirement makes me depressed? What if we can't have kids? What if I don't find a spouse? What if the weather gets really bad? What if she doesn't want to go out with me again? What if my presentation really stinks? What if I blow the interview? There's an endless amount of what if questions because there's a, your, your, your future is uncertain, right? It's just that uncertainty is hanging there. And our brain can be a jerk, and it tends to just fill that with, with these worst possible outcomes. Again, if that's you, it's time to wage war. This is an opportunity to recognize those what-if thoughts as they go through your head and, and to say no more, right? No more. Your goal is to never again allow a what-if thought to enter your head. And it's going to be hard, but that's the battle. That's the battle couple of just tips really quickly on how to combat that kind of thinking because I said last week we have an epidemic of anxiety in our culture right now and so a lot of people struggle with this kind of thinking. Um, 
I like to think of this kind of thinking as negative possibility thinking, right? You're, you're whatever possibilities. So, so it's possible that the economy will never come, uh, recover. But there's a hundred other positive possibilities as well. And so when you have that negative one, say it, it's possible, but then add five positive possible outcomes as well. Right? It could be actually a better year than it was last year. You could get a raise. Right? You could get a promotion. Maybe God's going to use this season to lead you to a job that's even better than the one you had before. All those are possible. You get to choose which one you dwell on. And whichever one you choose to dwell on will take you in completely different directions. So that's first, what if thinking. Second one, we call negative fortune telling. Negative fortune telling. This, this is kind of anticipating negative outcomes in the future. What if thinking says something negative is possible? This one says, I, I just know it's going to happen. I call it, I just know thinking, right? I just know the economy is going to be terrible. I just know I'll never get a second date. I just know we'll never have kids. I just know, I just know, I just know, right? You're, you're predicting a negative future. I just know that things won't work out. Again, it's a soundtrack. Plays through your head. You have a chance to capture it and then to go to war, to fight against it, to tear it down, to smash it. Third one here is all or nothing thinking or catastrophe thinking. And these soundtracks will contain words like always, never, can't, right? They're, they're words that, that catastrophize whatever is going on, makes it more extremely worse than, than it already is, right? And we tend to, to add these words. It's, it's, it, again, if you think of your, your feelings will follow your thoughts, how is it going to make you feel when it's constantly, I can't, never, always? I mean, it's, it, it'll pull you in extreme emotions, right, in a negative, pessimistic place. This kind of thinking, actually, we, we, we often use in conflict in our relationships. Or we lob these statements at each other like, like grenades, like, you never think about me. You're always so selfish, right? You don't care anything about my wants or needs. Like, we just throw these extreme statements that they have a way of, in our woundedness, wound the people around us. So again, this is an opportunity pay attention to those words as they come out of your mouth and capture them and and say, no more, no more. We don't have to engage in that that kind of thing. One of the things to think about with this kind of thinking is that you you have an emotion in a moment and you kind of of generalize that um, permanently in the future. So we're going to talk more about replacement thoughts, but I want to give you an example. One of them is in this moment, it really feels like I will always struggle with this, but I know this is just a moment. And God is bigger than this moment, right? So in this moment, you have the choice to embrace always, never, or to say, no, this is a moment. And it feels, it really does feel like this moment is just going to never end. But no, God is bigger than this moment. That's war. That's battle. That's how you do it. The next one here is we call should or must thinking. Should or must think. These are self-critical statements that we, we say, the soundtracks, they just produce guilt. That's why if you walk around struggling with guilt, I guarantee you, you, you're a master at playing these soundtracks over and over again. There's different kinds of, of should thinking. Um, there, there's definitely things that we should or shouldn't do, but this kind of thinking just pulls us into kind of this negative downward spiral of beating ourselves up in a critical way. So I should have done better at that. I should be losing weight faster than I am. I shouldn't struggle so much with anxiety. Like, it's not the kind of conviction that God gives us, the Holy Spirit brings when we're doing something wrong that moves us in a positive direction. It just kind of pulls us down. Beth said I could share an example from her life for this one. She said, uh, when I know of Beth, she's a hard worker. Her family, they're extremely hard workers. And so whenever Beth feels like, you know, I'm going to take a few hours and just kind of chill and relax, guess what happens? She starts shooting all over herself. She, <laughs> I really should be doing the laundry. You know, I shouldn't be so lazy. Should, should, sh- like, how relaxing is that? Right? It's just guilt. You lay there feeling guilty because shooting. And, and some of you, again, you're masters that you know that guilt feeling. Man, it's time to go to war. Right? It's time to start shooting all over the enemy instead of all over yourself. Right? So it's time to, to pick up those battle weapons and say, no more, no more. Some of you, again, can identify with that sense of guilt and condemnation. Remind the enemy, the Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
We want to feel conviction. We want to feel convicted of our sin and move in a healthy direction, but this kind of should or must thinking just kind of pulls us down into the enemy's fortress and, and that, uh, that, that we need to fight it. We need to fight it. Last one I want to mention here is mind reading. And some of you are masters at this. You think you are super skilled at being able to guess what other people are thinking about you, right? And again, your brain is a real jerk. Rarely do we have positive guesses about what we think other people. We, we kind of make these assumptions um, that, that are really negative, right? Man, they must think I'm a terrible parent. You know, they, they probably think I'm just a horrible person. They, I'm sure they thought what I said was stupid. Like you just assume you know what other people are thinking about you. And what's really going on is you have an insecurity and you feel insecure about it and so you assume that other people are thinking about you what you're thinking about yourself. But I got news for you. They're thinking about their own insecurities. They're not thinking about yours, right? They're, they're worrying about what you think of them. That's often what happens, but we, we kind of think. And if you're middle school, especially high school, there's something that just kind of awakens this where there's a lot of social comparison. It can be really hard constantly comparing and feeling inadequate in this way. So man, be careful of this mind reading, this, this tendency to assume you know what other people are thinking about you. And again, if that's you, this is your opportunity to go to war, right? To pick up these weapons that have divine power and to take on the enemy. These are things that, that it's like a, a muscle. Your brain really is like a muscle. It's, if you work at this, it'll be hard at first. It'll be difficult, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. You're going you're gonna to become these, like, again, broken soundtrack ninjas that can just recognize quickly, to pick out the enemy and, and the deceptions of the enemy and, and challenge and demolish and tear down the strongholds that are there and, and help others do it along the way as well. Well, the last list I want to give you is from John A. Cuff's book here, and, and I love this. Again, it's something you can memorize, you can take with you. It's really easy, but three questions to ask to see whether this is a broken soundtrack. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Right? Is it true? One of the, the biggest mistakes we make is assuming that what we think is true. I mean, it feels true, right? But just because something feels true doesn't make it true. Just because you believe it's true doesn't make it true. It's so important to wrestle with this. Is it true? Two things that help us with this. One is to share our thoughts with someone else and get... Have them help us sort out whether it's broken or not. Is it true or isn't it true? And the other, my favorite, is, is simply to imagine. I'm, I'm going to encourage you to do this, and we're going to build on it as we go out the next couple weeks. But imagine Jesus is sitting next to you, and you're having a conversation with him. And you just share your thought, your broken, your soundtrack. Like, and what does he say about it? I'd encourage you to have pen and paper. Like, write down your, you know, you got your list of broken soundtracks. Pray about it. Ask God. Ask the Spirit to speak to you. And then... And write down anything you hear him say. What does he say about that? Does he agree? Does he disagree? That's what the scripture says. We line it up with, 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 God's, with God's truth. What does Jesus have to say about that? I mean, is it helpful? Is it life-giving? Right? Is it growth-producing? Does it take you in a positive direction? Does it generate forward movement that is positive? Or does this pull you into to apathy in some way? And then the third one there, is it kind? Is it kind? Are the soundtracks that you say to yourself about yourself, are they compassionate? Are they gentle? Are they nurturing? Or do they tend to be harsh and critical? You know, after listening it for a few times there, do you, do you feel better about yourself or do you feel worse about yourself? Do you feel more hopeful or do you feel hopeless? Is it kind? Is this the kind of thing you would say to a friend? Would you say it to a family member that you care deeply about? I love those three. Again, encourage you just to be, write them down, take them with you. Think about those throughout the week as you, as you capture your soundtrack. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it kind? I, again, I love how practical this series is, you guys, and I really want to just encourage you. You know, it starts with this idea that embracing the truth that what you think shapes who you are. And if that's true, and if also the second part is true that you have an enemy, that is really trying to undermine you, then I guarantee you he's gonna, the battle is gonna be in your mind. Right? He's gonna come after your thoughts. And so we need to be aware of that. We need to start by, by capturing those thoughts, become more aware of our thinking, pay attention to what's under the surface and, and begin that, 
Begin that thought journal. Start writing things down. There's something about writing things down. I mean, Satan will look for your vulnerabilities. He will try to find those areas where there's a wound or there's weakness or there's fear, and he's just going to press in and press in and press in. But the good news is we've been given divine weapons, right? You have supernatural weapons. I really do believe that a series like this, there's, you could be someone who, who doesn't really believe in this Jesus thing. You're kind of checking it out. You can apply some of these principles to your life, and it will really help you experience freedom. But there's a whole other level that comes when you invite Jesus into your brokenness. And that's really what we want to do this morning. We invite Jesus into it. And, you know, part of this series for me is really, in, in some ways, trying to call you to battle, creating this sense of urgency, because if there's a real enemy and you've given weapons, it's only useful if you stand up and go to war, right? So the second part of this is to remove. You've got to battle. You've got to be ready. You've got to wake up tomorrow morning ready, right? The enemy's coming. The question is, are you, are you going to battle? You need to refute. You need to argue. You need to demolish, right? You need to smash. You need to go to war. The enemy is out there and he's fighting. The question is if we're going to stand up to him and say, no more, right? No more. And in fact, I'd encourage you to do that. One way to battle these thoughts is if you get them, I remember going out on the back deck at times where no one else was around, you know, and they're just speaking to the enemy, speaking it out, no more. I refuse. I refuse to be held to these thoughts any longer. I, I want freedom. I want freedom. And that's the invitation this morning. You know, we were talking about groups too, and um, it's not smart to go into battle by yourself. I mean, you think about it in real, like, that's usually people who blow themselves up. Like, that's, it's not a winning strategy to go to battle alone. You need a platoon. You need a group of people to go with you. That's why we keep talking about circles, groups. Like, find yours. What's your group where you can open up and you can talk about, you know, what's going on in your life? Because that's where you're going to experience growth. We need circles in our lives. Well, we're going to close with a, man, one of my favorite songs is I Speak Jesus. And uh, it's just a declaration of speaking Jesus really over all parts of our life. And again, the idea is we want to invite Jesus into the brokenness. I don't know anyone more trustworthy with your brokenness than Jesus. Right? He's, he's a fortress. He's a place you can go to. And you can, you can be real about all that's going on, the, the broken soundtracks, the broken places. And we just want to invite him in. And more than that, we want to take him with us out into the world, right? Because there's brokenness out there in the world. And we want to declare Jesus over those broken places and bring healing to the places that, that God really wants to use you to bring healing to. So stand with me if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you for, again, this, just this reminder that we live in a world at war. We have a real enemy. And man, it's our thoughts, it's our mind, it's our soundtracks that he's after. And thank you for the just, you know, even more important the reminder that you provide weapons with supernatural power. You defeated, you defeated the enemy on the cross and by rising from the dead. And, and now we have the choice of picking up these weapons and going to battle. God, empower us, wake us up to see the strategy of the enemy in our own lives and the people around us, God. God, we just wanna today just give you the brokenness, the broken parts of our own life, our, our broken soundtracks and invite you to speak truth and grace and healing and hope. You are the creator God. You're the, you're the God who hovered over the darkness from the beginning and you, you, you brought life out of nothing and, and you're breathing still over the broken parts, the dark parts of our worlds. God, we just wanna invite you in, open our hearts to what you wanna do. God, we're grateful. We're grateful for your love for us. We're grateful that you've given us weapons. We're grateful that you give us a faith community to stand with us. And God, may we leave today just motivated more than ever, more than ever to be in prayer and to be battling against what the enemy is up to in the world. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, we have a prayer team that'll be here on either side in the back. And um, man, if you want prayer, that, that, these are battle partners. They'd love just to pray with you pray over you. Um, and they'll be here after the service too if you want to if you want to come and spend time with them. Thanks.
Thanks for being here, guys. Can't wait to dive in again next week. If you're here in person, make sure you check out that group station, sign-up station out there before you leave. And we'll see you next week. Go and be the church.